welcome back to Amanda in the Raw. Yes, I finally picked a name. And today we're doing something not very raw. Uh, a few of you guys have asked me about the tea that I drink. And so I wanted to do a video explaining some of that and what goes in it. Before we get into it, just a reminder, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not any kind of medical professional. What I am is someone who has been vegan for a little over six years and has used that method to manage things like colitis, joint pain, and hormonal issues. I don't necessarily like the word heal because if we go back to what we were doing before, then of course issues come back. So it is very much a management situation. Um, if you ever have any questions, please leave them, um, please leave them in the comments below um, and subscribe if you want more videos like this. So without further ado, um, Today in my tea, I have olive leaf, this is whole olive leaf, I have burdock root, um, and I don't have any green tea in this tea today, but I do sometimes use green tea uh, if I feel like I need a little boost. So the olive leaf is a great antiviral, um, it's also anti-inflammatory, and there is some research that suggests it can help lower blood pressure. Um, I use it for HSV-1 and HSV-2 to help keep those suppressed. Also, it tastes nice. Everything that I'm using, I kind of think tastes nice, to be clear. <laughs> and I may have, you know, developed a taste for these things over time, but I like them. Um, burdock root actually has a nice roasted, smoky, maybe not smoky, um, definitely kind of like a roasted type flavor. It might be good if you're having trouble getting off coffee. Uh, dandelion tea is also great if you're having trouble getting off a of coffee. Um, burdock root is great for your liver and for your skin. Um, it has a few other uses. I'll, I'll include links to everything that I'm going over here in the description below along with some notes. Um, I use all of these items for specific reasons, but for the most part they all have more than one purpose, right? Um, or more than one benefit, I guess is how I would describe it. So. I'll leave a reference in the description below um, so you can check all of that out. And none of those will be affiliate links. Uh, that's not something that I do. So, and then green tea is also, um, I use it a lot of days. Uh, it does have caffeine in it. This is not, I have a decaf green tea as well. Um, and sometimes I use matcha instead, but green tea is, an amazing option if you're trying to get off of coffee, especially if you have hormonal issues, I do not recommend coffee. Um, it has L-theanine in it, which helps your body manage stress hormones and just stress in general a bit better. Um, it also kind of counteracts the effects that the caffeine has, uh, which has its pros and cons as well. So it's also highly antioxidant. So. It is actually a pretty great health tool if you want it. So this is kind of crowded, so I'm gonna get these out of the way. <laughs> I already boiled my water, steeped my tea. I don't have any specific amount of time that I steep my tea, it's just however long. I, I get it ready and then go do other things. And sometimes that turns into like an hour and sometimes it's just like three minutes. <laughs> I try to aim for about five minutes if I can, but it is what it is so um so that's already done um i add ginger to my tea every morning i really like the flavor to be honest um so i use quite a lot of it <laughs> um i will also leave i i rarely measure things so i will leave a reference of an approximate measurement of what i use below um, I want to remind you though that these are approximate and what you need might be a different dose. Um, I also think that you should talk with your doctor or uh, any medical expert that you are already working with before adding anything like this. Sometimes if you're on medication, it can conflict with different things you're looking to add into your diet. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. And if you want to consult with anyone that I recommend, um, I'm happy to help in terms of a sort of supportive health coaching method, but um, in terms of an actual doctor, I highly, highly recommend anyone from True North. Uh, they're fantastic. I've personally consulted with Dr. Veres twice. 
Um, she's part of the reason that I use ashwagandha, which we'll get to in a second. So I have some ginger in there. I actually buy this in bulk and refill this. Um, so this is really dehydrated ground up ginger, basically. It's, um, and I'm going to try a freeze dried version in the near future. Okay, and then uh, I do add a little bit of, uh, so ginger is anti-inflammatory. It can also help settle your stomach, especially if you're having any PMS issues. Um, it's really nice those mornings. Um, I like the flavor a lot, uh, but primarily the main benefit that I'm trying to get out of it is that it's anti-inflammatory. I've been having um, some joint pain in recent months. So um, I add a B-complex to my tea, which might seem weird because of course it comes in a capsule, so you could take it <laughs> like a normal human. <laughs> Um, but I find that that's actually too much. Sometimes if I have too much B12, it can keep me awake at night and make it hard to fall asleep. Um, so I, <laughs> I, uh, I use probably a third of one of these capsules uh, in my tea most mornings. Um, I do get injections sometimes. Um, but this, because it's a B complex, it has a variety of B vitamins in it, and those help you manage uh, stress. Uh, they also are great for supporting your nerve health, um, especially vitamins B5 and B6 are important for stress. Um, and I like this brand, Pure Encapsulations, um, but there are other brands that are good. Um, I use... This is actually not what it says on the label. This is Nigella sativa. It is another, it is a form of black seed, uh, but I like to be specific that it's Nigella sativa because there is something called black human and wild black human and uh, that has a different name and I don't think it's on this bottle. I bought it first originally and I just liked the bottle so I buy it in bulk and I grind this up and use this for about a week and then grind it up and use it all over again. Uh, but this is actually a really potent anti-inflammatory, but it's also really great for hypothyroidism and for hormonal health. So I love this. Um, Gregor has a video about it. It should be coming out soon. I think that I saw that information in one of his webinars and it's not released yet. Um, if it is out, I'll link it below. On to ashwagandha. So I have a fairly high stress job. Um, it probably shouldn't be as high stress as it is because we work with a bunch of small businesses, but I am a small business owner myself and it can feel a little stressful to say the least. <laughs> um, so I use ashwagandha to help manage stress basically. Um, it helps my body sort of cut off early enough in the day because I put it in my tea cut off the cortisol production and just sort of slow that down. And uh, basically I use this, I use the bulk of it in my tea in the mornings, but I do add it a little bit to my smoothies or to a drink that I make at night to go to bed. Um, it helps me sleep. It, it helps my body stop overproducing stress hormones. Um, I know I have a video, I believe with Jack about the vagus nerve. Uh, we might've made something on Instagram about that as well. And it's, it's really important to understand stress hormones in your vagus nerve because we are in this persistent state of sort of fight or flight in modern society. Um, whereas I know the euphemism is, you know, we used to be chased by a lion and maybe the stress would exist then, but at some point the chase would stop, right? We'd either die <laughs> or we'd be okay. And then our stress levels would go back to normal. In society, there's sort of the perpetual um, phone calls and text messages and emails, um, work, kids, keeping up with the house, just sort of everything that we've created for ourselves that has kind of become our own prison. And, you know, we could talk more about that later if you'd like, but um, so, so ashwagandha is great for hormonal health and for stress and for sleep. Um, it can have different effects on different people because it is an adaptogenic herb, so keep that in mind. Uh, but for me, it helps a lot with sleep. Um, and then I add some turmeric. I'm sure most of you know turmeric is highly anti-inflammatory. 
Um, I buy it at bulk, I refill the jar, pretty simple. Um, I do buy this, this comes in a, a larger package that I recently discovered by one of the brands that I do like, um, so I'll, I'll link several options for it below, but I am buying this in an even larger quantity now and then refilling it uh, to help keep my costs low, but also to help make sure that I'm buying from brands that I trust, which is really important. Um, and then I actually add, and I know it's weird, just a little bit of black pepper most mornings. All you need are a few flakes. I literally put in more than I need, uh, but it does help your body absorb turmeric, um, which is really important. Um, I also have a history of IBDs, inflammatory bowel disease, so using anti-inflammatory herbs have been a really valuable tool for me. Um, being vegan and being raw has been really helpful, but I just don't see any reason to not give my body every possible support it can get especially when I do feel a higher amount of stress most days, most work days. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. And then it's up to you if you, I often add a little coconut water to this as a sweetener or a little bit of um, molasses as a sweetener. Uh, you could add some almond milk. It's whatever you want to add to it. Um, the molasses kind of makes it look more like coffee if that's something that you're looking for there, but Molasses has iron and calcium in it, um, which is great. Of course, and I'm sure some of you may know, uh, tea can kind of inhibit absorption of those things. So it's kind of a catch-22. The way that I figure if I'm gonna use a sweetener, then at least it has some extra benefits to it. Um, so I feel the same way about coconut water, um, and it is a naturally occurring sweetener, but, um, you know, it is a sweetener. I'm not trying to sell it as the healthy part of all of this. <laughs> and that's uh, pretty much it. I don't think I forgot anything. <laughs> um, uh, a key detail is to have a mug that you love. <laughs> it helps with the enjoyment. Um, another important detail is that I always have a liter of water every morning before I even start all of this process. So. Um, we have a few fruit flies here because we eat a lot of fruit. It's normal. <laughs> um, okay, so that's it for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, leave them in the comments below. I love helping out with that. Um, there are other things that you can add to this. I don't usually add them, uh, but things like amla. Again, it's a vitamin C, so um, it's a source, source of vitamin C, so the heat in the water um, can counteract uh, that and uh, sort of degrade it. So that's why I usually don't bother with this. Um, sometimes I'll make a separate concoction with, you know, just water um, and vitamin C and maybe some of Marcus Rothkrantz herbs, which I like a lot. Um, and we can do another video about if you guys want. Uh, but this is really how I make it most mornings. I'll leave all of the options and the approximate measurements and links where you can get any of those in the description below. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's it. I tried to keep it simple and a little shorter, so we'll see how it turned out. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, guys. <laughs>